Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be looking at the risk metric. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on the premium list or Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You'll get access to this, among another, a number of other indicators. So this is a risk metric that we published back many years ago, right? I, I think dating all the way back to 2019. And since that time, it is it has surely been tested to the upside and the downside. And so far, it is relatively well stood the test of time. And in this video, what I what I want to do is I want to go through what it's done so far, or like what it's done in the past, and then where we are today, and then look at prior times in the past in comparison to where we are today. So try to understand what is the downside risk, okay? So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, I think that one of the things that you need to remember is that this risk metric accounts for diminishing returns. And unfortunately, there are a lot of metrics out there that do not account for diminishing returns. But if you account for diminishing returns, it tells you a slightly different story than you maybe otherwise would have would have read. And, and namely, that story is that back in April, when when Bitcoin was you know in the 60k level, we were at the highest risk band. And and when we said back then that we needed to go down for a few months at the very least before we could put in a new high. That one of the reasons was because we were just hanging out in these upper upper wristbands up here. We even made it to the 0.9 to 1 wristband. And you could argue that we were just as extended in early 2021 as we were in late 2017. It's just that because we a, a lot of a, a lot of times a lot of indicators don't account for diminishing returns, it seems like it's it's not, but when you account for the idea of diminishing returns, we were as extended as we were in 2015, 2017, just a diminished, a slightly diminished form um, in, in sort of dubious extrapolation from what we had done in the past. Okay, so that's the argument. Now, since then, you know, the risk levels have been adjusted, right? And, and once you reach a certain risk level um, and you kind of come down, you can see that once you get to that price later, it's no longer corresponds to that same overheated, overheated risk level, right? You, the, the market has adjusted to whatever the new normal is. And the same way in 2013, you can see the same thing happens, right? I mean, we, we went to a really high risk level. We came all the way back down to 0.3 risk. And then ultimately, we went back up the risk bands to another secondary top at point over 0.9 risk, okay? And then eventually, we fell all the way back down. And then... In 2017, we went all the way up the wristbands again, right? And and so this risk metric was actually developed somewhere over here. Okay, so I remember making it somewhere over here, accounting for diminishing returns. It's on the YouTube channel. I'm sure you can go find it. Um, and since then, what we've experienced is is basically this. Since I created this metric, okay, it, it was something like this. So I created it somewhere over here. And then since then, we, this is what we've experienced, both to the downside and to the upside. Now, to the downside, you can see that the lowest risk level we've gone to is around 0.13 at 3.8K. So 0.13. Pretty low risk level, right? We don't, have, we don't often make it to that risk level. But you can also see that we also went to the highest risk bands over here when we went into our sort of our early 2021 distribution phase. And so we've sort of tested either end of the spectrum, right? We've gone to the lowest risk band. We've also gone to the highest risk band. And so far, it has stood the test of time. It is always hard because whenever we go to the lowest risk bands, it's always easy to think it's going to go lower. Whenever we go to the highest risk bands, we always like to think that the price is going to go higher. But in reality, I mean, you know, the warning signs were, were there in early 2021. So I would argue that this, this metric does really, really well during a parabolic rally, right? Which is what we were hoping it would do, right? Scaling out of Bitcoin during a parabolic rally. However, it also has this caveat that sometimes you'll see rallies like in 2019 and like in the second half of, of 2021, where we sort of go to some higher risk levels, but we don't actually go all the way up to the top. Right, so like in 2019, we went to the 0.65 risk level. In late 2021, we went to like the 0.57 risk level or something like that. So we didn't actually make it all the way up the wristbands again, 
we actually we've we've come back down. And one of the things I, I, I think to consider here is that what does that tell you? First of all, it tells you that you should not take anything for granted. Not every parabolic rally or every rally for that matter will take you to, you know, to the to the highest wristbands. And therefore, having some type of a strategy to take profits to dynamically DCA out or just DCA out in the same way that you DCA in does tend to be a, a decent strategy. Okay. So this is just purely, you know, it's just purely showing um, where the risk is. This does not include any other things. It does not include any things going on like fundamentally. It doesn't include any on-chain data. It doesn't include any social metrics or derivatives data or anything like that. So it doesn't necessarily give you the the full picture, right? It doesn't necessarily give you the full picture. And if you couple, say, the risk levels and say, well, you know, social stats were going down at the time, maybe that would give you some more insight. And we actually have that on on the YouTube channel or on the on the website as well. But looking just at this metric, it helps to scale out of, of parabolic rallies. Now, what I want to do is I want to go through where we currently are and, and try to help us understand what is the downside risk and also what's the upside potential. Well, what is the downside risk? Really understanding what that is so that you can plan accordingly and so that you can you can have your portfolio be in a, in a certain portfolio weighting so that you take advantage of, of where the current risk level is. So right now, the current risk on Bitcoin, according to this metric, is coming in at 0.361. Now, looking at this on, on say, like a, a color-coded basis is somewhat difficult. If, if you're not familiar with it, it goes from 0 to 1, and the blue is low risk, red is high risk. It should be, it should be fairly self-explanatory. I know we've talked about it a lot of times. But one of the things we can do is, is we can look at this on the secondary y-axis, the risk. And this gives us a different way to view the market, right? A different a different way where you, I mean, it's the same thing as this one. It's just that it helps us quanti quantify what the actual risk level is at any given time, okay? So what you notice is we oscillate, right? We go down, we go up, we go down, we go up. Same thing, it's just over and over and over again. And right now, we are we're we're technically on the risk levels we are in a downtrend we have not gone back up you can see that once upon a time we went all the way up to the you know to the 0.93 risk level or so i believe on hourly data it was 0.94 risk this is just daily data and and then since then we we, we put in another local top at 0.567 risk and then here we've recently gone back up to around 0.41 risk or so now when you look at this chart one of the things to, to consider is the fact that we do not know what is going to happen, okay? Now, that is the first thing to consider, is we don't know. And therefore, since we do not know what is going to happen, it's you're better off coming up with a strategy no matter what happens. And so, for me, what I do is I DCA Bitcoin whenever we're below 0.5 risk, but I don't treat every DCA the same. So if we're between the 0.4 to 0.4.5 wristband, then I DCA a small amount. If we're between the 0.3 to 0.4 wristband, then I DCA more. It could be twice as much. Between 0.2 to 0.3, it's like 3x, 0.1 to 0.24x. And if we ever go down to the 0 to 0.1 wristband, which basically almost never happens, then you really try to go in heavy. Okay, so if you think about it as a function of your stablecoin stack, you would want to have more stablecoins as we go up the wristbands, and then as we go down them, you want to make sure that you're putting those stable coins into the market if history is any indication, not financial advice. But as we go down the wristbands, and if you go to the lowest wristbands, then that would mean I would be fully deployed, or maybe I'd have a little bit of stable coins like I usually do, but mostly fully deployed into the market in preparation for another leg up. Now, where are we today with it? compared to where we've been. You can see that we're, we're sort of in this range. We've been in this range before following a, a, you know, a parabolic rally. And, and in three, so you can count them, right? One, two, three, and four. Three out of those times, three out of four times, we went down to the blue before going back to the red. Okay, I'll say that again. Three out of the four times that we were in this range, we went down to the blue before going back up to the red. 
However, there was in fact one time where we did not go back down to the blue before going back up to the red, to the highest wristband, and that was in 2013. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, what it means is that in the past, 75% of the time, we did go to a low risk level. Again, this is not what I necessarily want to happen or think has to happen. It's just what has happened, right? It's just, I'm just telling you what has happened, okay? So three out of the four times, we went to a lower risk level. And that means that having cash on hand to take advantage of that would not be the worst strategy, even if it never plays out, right? Even if it never plays out. And so the one time where we did not go to the lower risk bands was in 2013. So if we go look at that, I mean, we, we, you could argue we're seeing some type of similar action, okay? Um, namely, after falling in 2013, we went right down to the 0.3 risk level, okay? And then after that, after going to 0.3, we went up to 0 0.4, 0 0.399, right? 0 0.4. So 0 0.3 to 0.4. And then we actually fell all the way back down to close to 0 0.3 risk again. I mean, we went down to 0 0.311 before seeing the second rally. So I'm not saying that we have to do that this time, but just to give you a reminder as to what happened back then, and then if we compare it to what happened, what's happening today, again, 0 0.3 risk up to the 0.4 risk level, back down close to 0.3 risk, and then the next leg started. And it wasn't before that final sell-off that it actually started. If you look at where we are today, you can see a very similar pattern. It is playing out. Okay, so 0.3 risk up to just over the 0.4 wristband, and now we're coming back down. We're currently at 0.367 risk. If we were to go all the way back down to, say, the 0.31 risk level or the 0.3 risk level and then bounce and then start to see a lot of strength, then you could argue it's a stretched out version of 2013, which is what we've talked about before. However, if on the other hand, we go to the lower risk levels, which is a possibility, right? There is a, there is a certain probability based on what we've seen before, right? A 75% chance based on what the history has showed us that we could go to the lower wristbands. And if that happens, you need to be adequately prepared. Again, I don't control the market. I just want people to manage their risk and to understand that there is downside risk in this market. We're not at like the 0.1 risk level where it seems like, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's plus or minus, you know, we are at a level where the floor could fall out and we could go into some type of final capitulation, which takes us to the lower risk bands, or we might hold the level and ultimately trend higher. The point is no one knows, right? No one knows. And we've talked about the bear case. We talked about the bull case. We talked about a lot of different things, but you need to manage your risk. And, and this is one way that I do it. If you don't want to use this one, that's fine. I would encourage you to use something else. There's a lot of different metrics you can use out there to navigate the cryptoverse, but just come up with something and stick to it. In the same way that I DCA into the market when we're below 0.5 risk, I DCA out of the market when we're above 0.5 risk. So for instance, between the 0.5 to 0.6 wristband, I would sell Y. Between the next one, between 0.6 to 0.7, 2Y. And then so on and so forth to where in the upper wristband, you're theoretically selling 5Y. Or, you know, so that means that in the, t in the t highest two risk bands, 0.8 to 1, you're selling two thirds of your Bitcoin while only reserving a small amount for the lower bands. The reason why this is useful is because it allows you to take some profits during smaller rallies, like what you saw in 2019 or in, let's say, late 2021. It would allow you to take smaller profits or smaller, you know, you, you might take a little bit out just in case. And then had you taken a little bit out, you would have been happy because, in fact, we did not go to the higher wristbands. But you also don't want to take everything out because what happens if we do go to the higher wristbands? Okay, so it's a complicated game to play. Um, but really, the longer you do it, the easier it becomes and you sort of become apathetic and numb to whatever happens in the market. I will say, you know, that there is a chance that we go to the lower wristbands. And I understand if that happens, then lengthening cycles will not have played out. Okay, so we need to be clear about that. If it if we go to the lower wristbands, okay, and, and we come down here, then it's clear that lengthening cycles is not is not playing out. And and I'll I mean I'll go ahead and say that now so that if it happens, it's just clear as day. If we hold without having to go back down to the lower wristbands, that I think you could argue that it that it's still on track. But that's where we currently stand today. 
I, I think it's useful to, to follow this stuff. And again, if you guys want access to this, we do have the sale on the premium list. It's going to go on until April 17th. So check it out, lock in the lower rate. And after that, the prices will go up. But if you sign up before then, you can keep the lower rate as long as you do not cancel. You'll get access to this chart. Um, as well as a ton of other charts on, on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. We have um, random charts. We have on-chain charts. We have social metrics charts and derivative charts, logarithmic regression, return on investment, total cryptocurrency market capitalization charts, average return on investment in the short term, ROI bands, all sorts of stuff, right? All sorts of stuff. So make sure you check it out into the cryptoverse.com. The sell will go on until April 17th. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.